often considered as one of the best cricketers in his generation and regarded by quite a few as the greatest batsman of all time. It's no doubt that everyone knows how legendary Brian Lara was. But just exactly how good was he? How did he start to make a name for himself? And how does he compare to other legends and all-time greats? What's up guys, it's Cricket Stories and we are back again with another video and today we are going to look at just how good was Brian Lara. The Prince, as he was popularly known, had his own swagger with the bat that was incomparable. And his love affair with cricket began very early as age at just 14. He scored 745 runs in the school boys league with an average of 126.16 per innings, which earned him selection for the Trinidad and Tobago national under-16 team. And in the very next year, his stupendous performances would earn him a place in the under-19 cricket team of West Indies. In his childhood, his obsession with the game would be so much that he would play cricket with anything he got. He himself said, we played the game with anything we could put our hands on, hard orange, lime or marble, in the backyard or in the streets. Lara's strokes, unlike most West Indian batsmen, possess the grace of a violinist and the sweetness of the notes of a flute. And the world was introduced to his melody in his second first-class match in 1988, where he made 92 against a Barbados attack, consisting of the deadly duo of Joel Garner and Malcolm Marshall, the bowlers who the world feared the most. Brian Lara was due to make his international debut for the West Indies in 1989, but it got delayed as he withdrew his name following the sad demise of his father. Fast forward to 1993, Brian Lara, while playing just his fifth test match, scored an unbelievable 277 at Sydney against the most feared team in the world. The West Indies won the series due to him and Lara even named his daughter Sydney, signifying the importance of that innings in his life. And this innings would actually kickstart his career and inspire him to revolutionize the game. His cover drive and whip shots were simply breathtaking. In addition to his late cuts, Lara looked like a more refined or graceful left-handed version of Viv Richards. I've rarely seen batsmen who could make such outrageously late adjustments as Lara, who possessed the footwork of a ballet dancer. But of course, some of you would be pointing at the number of times West Indies lost when Lara was in the team. But I should tell you that the difference between Lara and so many other batsmen was the strength of the team he was playing for. Others like Ricky Ponting and Sachin Tendulkar were playing for a team that had world-class cricketers. However, for the most part, Lara's team was not great and sometimes downright terrible. Lara finished on the losing side in almost half of the tests he played, 63 out of 131 to be precise. But the blame could not often be laid at his door. He scored 5,316 runs in those 63 defeats at an average of 42.19 with 14 hundreds. One instance is from his greatest series against Sri Lanka in 2001. Lara scored a staggering 688 runs in three games. Yet, all three games were still lost. And also, Lara has scored 20% of his team runs, a feat surpassed only by Bradman with 23% and George Headley with 21%. So you can see, mostly, he was fighting alone for his team. But when the West Indies won, Brian Lara almost every time would be the reason behind their victory. Lara's 153 against Australia in Bridgetown in 1999 was one of those innings that is regarded as one of the best knock ever in Test cricket. Weston rated it as the second greatest innings in Test cricket, while the West Indies were set a target of 308 in the fourth innings. At one point, they were tottering at 105 for 5. It was then that Lara showed his mettle and guided the West Indies team to an impossible win with just one wicket remaining. He was named the Man of the Match as well as the Man of the Series award. Brian Lara would dominate almost every bowler in the world, but the way he treated the great Glenn Megra was something that no one has ever done, simply plundering runs off his bowling. No batsman punished Megra as much as Lara did, judging his length and line like nobody else. In addition, Megra himself said that no one else was able to read him as good as Lara, and even rates Lara as the best batsman of all time. Brian Lara was exceptional against spin too, with a healthy average of 82.5. We played with tennis balls, and you can actually chuck the tennis ball. In softball cricket, you can chuck it into the pitch and turn it a mile. And I felt that it was a huge part of understanding how to play spin from an early age. If you look at Lara's stats against Shane Vaughan, he averaged 71.6 against him in tests. Lara, in an interview, revealed 
that he read the Australian quite easily. I bet you go out and ask the best batsmen out there how they felt facing Shane Vaughan, and I'm pretty much sure their answer won't be as positive as Brian Lara's answer. Only eight Test double centuries were scored against Shane Vaughan, and Lara scored three of them. Against Murli Tharan, Lara had an even better average, which stood at a staggering 124. The bowlers, who had bamboozled every batsman in the world, were somehow not able to trick the West Indian legend. And like Megra, Murli Tharan too hailed Lara as his toughest opponent. Sir Vivian Richards beautifully describes Brian Lara in an interview. Brian has got the best photographic memory where batting is concerned. It's like there's a computer fixed in his mind and he knows. Brian doesn't hit fieldsmen. He hits caps. To me, because of that and the style and the manner in which he does it, he is one of the most entertaining players I have seen. Brian Lara's natural talent was simply God gifted. I doubt any batsman ever in cricket was endowed with more natural ability. Bowlers were always in dismay about how he could hit the same delivery to four different parts of the ground. Another interesting aspect is that he is the only man to have reclaimed the test record of the highest score. This was after he scored 375 against England in 1994, which was broken in 2003 by Matthew Hayden when he scored 380. And just six months after his 380, you all know, Lara scored an outstanding 400 against England in 2004 to reclaim his throne. Before moving on, I would like to say something. One thing that every bowler in the world should be aware is that never ever make Brian Lara angry. I mean it. If you don't believe me, go ask Tanish Kaneria of Pakistan who made the big mistake of teasing the lion. I guess he regrets his decision to tease Lara till this day. Although Lara's captaincy hasn't been out of this world, he was selected and dropped as captain quite a few times. Still, he was able to guide West Indies to the 2004 ICC Champions Trophy victory the last trophy won by the West Indies in ODI and also came as runner-ups in the 2006 edition of the tournament. Now let's go ahead and look at Lara's career numbers. Brian Lara played 131 test matches and scored 11,953 runs at an average of 52.88, including 3400s, 48 half centuries and 164 catches. In 299 ODIs, he scored 10,405 runs at 40.48 with the best of 169, including 1900s, 6350s and 120 catches. Also, in 261 first-class matches, Lara scored 22,156 runs at 50.88 with the best of 501 not out, including 6500s, 8850s and 320 catches. Brian Lara was the second man in the history of the game to score two first-class quadruple centuries after Bill Ponsford. Moreover, he has nine double centuries in Test cricket, third on the list after Bradman's 12 and Kumar Sangakkara's 11. As a captain, Lara scored five double centuries, the highest by any captain in the world. He was the fastest batsman to score 10,000 and 11,000 Test runs. He has also received the world's most prestigious award. BBC Overseas Sports Personality of the Year, along with Garfield Sobers and Shane Vaughan. He also held the record for the highest total of runs in a test career after overtaking Alan Border in 2005, which was overtaken by Sachin Tendulkar in 2008. These stats clearly show the greatness of Brian Charles Lara. Those who have watched him will never forget his flamboyant shots. He had written immortal cricket history with his bat, in full flow with blundering runs. He was as majestic as an emperor with an aura of invincibility. No left-hander took domination to such realms and few batsmen ever were more mercurial as Lara. Brian Lara wasn't just about statistics and records. He left an indelible mark on the cricketing world. His legacy transcends the number on the scoreboard. Lara's impact was felt not just in the Caribbean, but across the globe. He inspired generations of cricketers and fans alike. In the grand theatre of cricket, Brian Lara wasn't just a player, he was a performance, a spectacle and a legend. His bat, a magic wand, his innings, a gripping tale. As we applaud the brilliance of this cricketing maestro, let's remember that Brian Lara wasn't just good, he was extraordinary. And if you made it till the end of this video, I'm curious to know, who do you guys think is better, Sachin Tendulkar or Brian Lara? Type your answer in the comment section below so I know who Brian Lara's die-hard fans are. And like always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos like this.
Till then, keep watching and enjoying the game. See you soon.